I, I was diagnosed when I was still 16 after my first um, first sexual experience, and that's back in 2003, so the year Section 28, the legislation that stopped schools talking openly about homosexuality had been repealed. So the world was quite a, a different place back then, and, you know, a, a effective medication had only been around for about six or seven years, so the diagnosis was still very, very heavy. It was considered still to be life limiting and it was a chronic condition. Um, and, you know, things like uh, getting insurance and holiday insurance, all sorts of life was just all of a sudden much more complicated for me. Um, and thankfully, though, over the years um, that followed, um, you know, medication for HIV has improved radically and attitudes as well, although there is still a way to go. Mm. And with your show, uh, First Time, this was something you put together to really flip things right around, to go from shame living with HIV, but to tell the world, to own it, and to actually change the conversations people are having around people living with HIV. Yeah, well, I, I mean, I, I lived for about 15 years in relative silence. So and that's that's not uncommon for people to not tell people the close closest to them. I, I didn't tell my my mom and dad and my family. And uh, and that really plagued my life until about 2017. I was really heavily reliant on drugs and alcohol to get me through the week. I was in a toxic relationship and I, I realised that as a theatre maker, I didn't see my story represented. You know, we have amazing stories like It's a Sin about the, the early part of the HIV and AIDS epidemic, and they're really important, but I didn't see a story about someone living with it today. And so went on this journey to make First Time, which is my solo show all about my life, that kind of charts that 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 moving from that shame to, to being proud and being a loud and proud HIV activist today. Uh, so in line with all the work that's being done uh, in terms of getting people out there to, to get that test done, some incredible news in that we're having more people who are heterosexual testing positive uh, compared to those who are homosexual uh, testing positive, but also just a slight negative with that as well. Yeah, I mean, the, the, the stats show that the, the, the most, most likely people to contract HIV at the moment are people in the heterosexual population. The, for a number of years, the, the diagnosis in the, in the gay population have been declining. And there's, there's loads of reasons around that, around the work that's done in the LGBTQ community with access to testing and increased information around PrEP, which is the drug that can stop you getting HIV if you're not using condoms. But that's, that, that information isn't reaching some people um, in the heterosexual community in certain places. So it's really important that we double down and remind people that HIV can affect anyone. Um, it's not a gay disease. Um, you know, anyone can contract HIV. And that if you're sexually active, it's really, really important to get a regular test. You can book them on, online now. You can do them at home, you know, and it's so much easier than it was back when I got tested. And it's so, so important if we're going to end HIV for good. And how are you doing today with your mental health off the back of uh, your own one man show and off the back of the success of It's a Sin? Um, well, I'm riding high off the back of It's a Sin and the show. Um, I've, I've, had the, I've had an incredible year and I'm so thankful um, every day for, for the opportunities that have come my way. But that really only happened when I started to live authentically. So, yeah, I mean, I, I, I'm great. I have my ups and downs. I still suffer from anxiety and I have post-traumatic stress disorder. So those are conditions that have to be kept in check. But what performing my show reminds me is how far I've come and also that people like me, LGBTQ people and people with HIV, we might face extra challenges in life, but we can live happily and healthy and we should be able to with the right support. Well, Nathan, you make sure you always look after you, OK? And the work you're doing is changing lives. I hope you know that every day. So good talking to you.